So here in this farm, you can see huge fields stretching for miles. The tall golden plants with thin stems and heads that look like braids, those are the wheat plants. Obviously, we don't use the whole plant. The part we use right here in these small subsections, they have wheat kernels. These kernels are further processed by grinding them down into a fine powder called atta. Now, let's look at another farmer's plot. Here, you will see acres of lands that are partially flooded with water under which there is a layer of soft mud formed. Those tiny little green shoots that you see there are your rice plants. These rice plants grow and eventually, like the wheat plants, bear seeds as you can see at their ends. These seeds contain the rice grains, which are tiny grains that we buy at the store. Now, who's not familiar with the jack and the beanstalk? If you know the story, you know that some bean plants grow upwards in a climbing vine. In the real world, they need poles for support. Other bean plants grow as bushes. The family of beans is called legumes. Most legumes are housed in pods that grow on these plants. Beans are essentially seeds of these plants. Let's open these beans. As you can see, these beans are snugly arranged in a cocoon-like pod. One cool fact about legumes is that since they are seeds, if you put them in some water, they start sprouting as if they were to grow into another bean plant. This is how we get sprouts. These are also edible and packaged with nutrients. Have you ever chewed on sugarcane? This stalk is unbelievably sweet, isn't it? Well, it is these fibrous stalks that are used to obtain sugar. Sugarcane stalks are basically churned and water and lime is added to produce a juice. The juice is boiled until sugar crystallizes. The crystals are run through a machine which is called a centrifuge which separates the syrup. In the final stages, the sugar goes through a refining process which involves washing and other purification methods to produce pure white crystals of sugar. Who would have thought that something that looks like this could have changed to something like this? Hey, what's up, Doc? Let's move on to the vegetable patches that you see here. I'm sure some of you may have smaller ones in your backyard. If you do, you would know that some vegetables like pumpkins grow on vines and contain seeds that normally an animal would spread after eating the vegetable. Potatoes, carrots and onions on the other hand are called tubers. They grow under the soil and act as a storage where plants can store their nutrients. This is why they have a high calorie or energy content. We are in an orchard where fruits are grown. These lines of trees grows mangoes, oranges and apples. All of these are fruits which not only store energy but contain seeds to be spread by animals that eat them. Other fruits like watermelons grow on vines and are grown in what we call as patches. So, grains, fruits and vegetables are edible portions of a plant, but they aren't the only edible portions. We spoke about how you can get oil from plants. Do you see the sunflower in these fields here? The seeds of the flower contain oil and are pressed to squeeze out the oil which is then collected, bottled and sold to us. Sesame oil, like mustard oil, is also obtained from the seeds of a sesame plant. These seeds are housed in pods which grow on the sesame plant. Some plants have several edible parts. The mustard plant leaves can be cooked and eaten and are called mustard greens. Plantains are plants that are never wasted. The entire plant can be used while cooking, not just the fruit. The flower, the leaf, the fruit and the shoots are all used to make different kinds of dishes. To keep learning with such engaging videos, download Byju's, the learning app today.